the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go into the altar of God. God Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we might be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. Having confessed our sins unto God, let us recite together the second confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer. And the Lord be with you. And also you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. I waited, waited for the Lord, who bent down and heard my cry, drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp, set my feet upon the rock, steadied my steps. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, grant that we may benefit from the graces merited by our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the Apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. 
yet more than ever believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. The response for today is give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. Let the house of Israel say his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the unjust. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. The second reading for today is taken from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe, with a gold sash round his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the nether world. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Too costly in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I praise you, Lord, for you raised me up and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You kept me from going down to the pit. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. John. On the evening 
evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called to Demas. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. These words are taken from today's Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters. Following the arrest of Jesus, and hearing that he had been crucified, the disciples hid themselves out of fear. They had locked the doors and barred the windows. I am sure that they heard every sound, waiting for that one knock that would bring them to their own arrest and eventual death by crucifixion as their Lord. But that evening following the resurrection, it was the Lord who appeared to them. For whatever reason, Thomas was not present. Peace be with you, was how Jesus greeted them. Peace. His greeting was intended to calm their fears. It was intended to give them confidence and courage in place of the terror and dread that they must have felt. 
Those words were to transform them from horror to rejoicing. Again, Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. It was his assurance to them that he indeed was with them. He would greet them again, this time with Thomas present, a week later with the same message, Peace be with you. Last Sunday, Christians around the world gathered to celebrate Easter. But we were to learn that in Sri Lanka, there were a series of bombs that were uh, detonated, killing 248 and injuring hundreds of others. <clears throat> Yesterday, in San Diego, a 19-year-old armed with an AR-15 semi-automatic weapon walked into a synagogue as worshipers were celebrating Passover, killing one and injuring others. It was deemed a hate crime. He had posted an anti-Semitic manifesto. Six months to the day, another deadly attack had taken place at a synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, killing 11. Every day, we read and we hear of the rage, the anger, the hatred of so many lodged against innocent men, women, and children, young and old. It is a far cry from the calmness of the word peace that Jesus brought that evening in Jerusalem to his disciples. Peace be with you. In Luke chapter 19, verse 41 through 44, we read the following. As he... Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city. He wept over it and said, If you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God coming to you. Jesus called the Prince of Peace, wept over Jerusalem, the city of peace, for he foresaw the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, beginning in 67 AD and culminating in 70 AD. I am sure that today he weeps over many cities, for we ourselves see an eroding deterioration of the moral fiber of our society. So much anger, so much hatred, so much division, too many guns, and so few prayers, and not enough God. So today, the Lord comes to us as his believers with a message of peace but also a commission. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. We are called upon my brothers and sisters to go forth as his disciples to our own circles of influence, whether it be in our families, 
or among our friends. You see, Jesus needs us to carry his message of peace and love as we need his presence to be complete. Without sharing his message, his message dies. And without his message, the church has no purpose. You see, there exists in Christianity a spiritual marriage. He, Jesus, is the bridegroom. The church is his bride. And we who compose his church are his body. We find this concept in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The fact remains is that Christ needs us and is dependent upon us for we are his hands, his feet, his voice, and his heart. Likewise, the church needs Christ for we are dependent on him as the living bread which came down from heaven and gives us spiritual sustenance and guidance. Jesus has given us a message and has called upon us to go forth and to share this message of hope, reconciliation, forgiveness, mercy, love, and peace. Without proclaiming the good news, the church has no message and no mission. To carry out this message and this mission, he gave his church the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit. Did he not breathe on his disciples that evening and say, receive the Holy Spirit? Finally, my brothers and sisters, without Jesus, there is no one who we really can turn to in times of trial. Did not Jesus also say, come to me, all you who labor and are heavenly laden, and I will give you rest. My brothers and sisters and Jesus, the resurrected Lord, we find peace in times of trouble, chaos, and confusion. It is my prayer that during the season of Easter, it will be a time of renewal, rebirth, and rededication by all of us to the living presence of the resurrected Lord as we rest and abide in his peace. May the words found in the 23rd Psalm remind us of the peace that the Lord brings to us. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father in the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, I will present my thank offering to you, for you have delivered me from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Alleluia. to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive the sovereign, most holy Trinity, which we make in remembrance of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in all of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may add to their honor and aid our salvation. May they, whose memories we honor on earth, intercede for us in heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, and the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the of His Holy Church. Amen. Let us pray, Lord our God, accept the offerings of your rejoicing church, which you have enlivened us this day, and grant us the gift of perpetual gladness, for you have given us cause for great joy in the resurrected Lord. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Oh, 
especially at this time when he became our paschal sacrifice. He is the true lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us. And by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life unto all of us. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of the Highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffer, and die for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and would spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them 
in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and conflict.
consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May they at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and you rise from them, O my people. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Lord Jesus Christ, to you belong the keys of life and death. By the will of the Father, preserve us through these holy mysteries, that our redemption may be assured and our doubts relieved. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. 